Um, I do also have a link to the slides. I'll just throw them in general on the Slack if you want to follow along. Yeah, so seven minutes is going to be rough, but I'll do my best. Um, basically, I had a year of AI shenanigans, and um, this is best summed up as, well, I was trying to tackle the looming reproducibility crisis in science, which we have many of at the moment, but uh, basically the one caused, facilitated by easy access to machine learning uh, in Python, scikit-learn, and all that stuff. And during my, my entire thing, ChatGPT happened, so we have a full-on AI bubble at the moment, which doesn't make it easier to talk about like the important things, because some places like uh, OpenAI and Google are very interested in uh, making you afraid of rogue AI that will self-replicate and uh, run into your computers, while we have actual problems that are, it's trained on, uh, well, mostly racist data from the internet and perpetuates, um, yeah, like biases that we already have in society. And addressing that would actually be really interesting because like, it's not great at the moment. So what did I do? Um, well, let's start with a plan. I wanted to mainly participate in the community. I wanted to create a workshop, do some YouTube, write some articles and give some talks. Real good tip for fellows, uh, if you just apply with the stuff that you're doing already, um, that makes your life much easier. <laughs> um, so I started out with a diversion right away because I'm neurodivergent. I have ADHD and I'm slightly autistic. Well, more autistic than ADHD, to be honest. So I just did something completely else than I applied with, which is try to make a tutorial for reproducibility and machine learning for science. This is six Jupyter notebooks. I presented all of that at EuroSciPy and I took the hiding the broccoli approach. I really like that approach of basically teaching people things they need to learn uh, by getting them in with something else. That's why I called the tutorial increase citations, ease review and foster collaboration and kind of formed all that around that. So taught people how to make reproducible machine learning re uh, research by getting them in the door with this kind of framing and saying, look, if you open source your stuff, you get easier citations. You get easier reviews by, um, well, by having proper uh, evaluation of your machine learning. And your collaboration is much easier if you use Git. Um, for example, or machine learning tracking. So really framing it around that, I try to focus on the machine learning researchers and make these Jupyter notebooks basically super easy to use and to just copy out and use in your research. Um, then I had a bad conscience because I applied with a workshop and I gave a tutorial and I was like, ah, it's not the same thing. Turns out making a workshop is much easier because you can invite fellow fellows. Um, and yeah, if you are in my vicinity, sometimes it happens that I come to you with something. Hey, do you want to do something in a few days? And some people are rightfully so said no. Some people didn't and I'll be eternally grateful. Um, but yeah, we wrote that proposal in days got accepted way late into that. We wanted to invite speakers and it was like, yeah, so you have three weeks to find people to like make a full presentation, which was a whole thing in and of itself. I don't think the workshops at Pi Data are actually like supposed to be workshops. They're more like work sessions maybe. So not like what we consider workshops in the classical sense. But yeah, um, like it was a two hour session. It was really nice, really cool. We got two people invited anyways. Um, that was another fellow, um, Mark. And then we also had uh, someone that I look up to there, which was fun, uh, Goku, who made the um, like a really nice machine learning research, uh, resource. But um, yeah, two hours, 70 people, people attended. We only had like a drop off of 10 people right before the end, which is fair enough because the um uh, keynotes were starting then so that was a really fantastic experience and it fed right into my my need for community and interacting with like some awesome people which we have a lot of here in the fellows 
And yeah, you can see all that at realworld-ml.xyz um, because that's a fun ending and I didn't really know what to make better of it without paying a lot for it. So there is our workshop material. Everything's recorded, transcribed. Um, materials like slides are made available if they're available and linked there. So you can find all that there. So that was the workshop done. And I felt like, OK, cool. That's good. And then I got bored. And like I said, sometimes the dopamine just drives you a certain way. So I made the tutorial uh, from before more accessible and appealing. It's a Jupyter book now with extra content in it, as you can see on the left here. Sorry, it's a little bit distracting, but I wanted to show it. And yeah, um, all of that, a bit more search engine optimization, although I'm pretty sure I messed it up at some point. And oh, I messed up the uh, order of my slides. You can find that at, ah, oh, damn it. Uh, at ml.recipes. I'll just put it in the Slack as well. Um, yeah, so that was really fun doing that. And I'm going to have to speed through the rest because I have a minute left. So other stuff. You don't have to speed. Don't worry. Take your time. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> well, OK, I'll try not to speed. Um, I worked on reproducible ML at work. Um, so we are using weights and biases now, for example, and we're doing a lot of very, very strict evaluation, which is also much easier at my work because uh, we're predicting the weather. So we have to have strong evaluation anyway. So it's more of a communication thing with the evaluation section on what they can do with our machine learning predictions. Then I was involved in a MOOC that taught machine learning to in, in weather and climate to 7,000 people that signed up about like 1500 finished the course actually which is still an amazing like turnout for this kind of thing and i got to sneak in my uh my evaluation section in there as well warning people that if they don't do this they have no idea that their machine learning is actually doing what it's supposed to so trying to catch them early and yeah did that in like a 5 minute video on that one and yeah that was really successful i got a lot of tags on linkedin afterwards which was lovely and yeah then i make skillshare courses i'm actually working on a chat gpt one at the moment why wouldn't i everyone does um and i always try to sneak in like ethical and reproducible ai or machine learning in there so i have a data science class that teaches you all the reproducibility stuff which has uh over a couple thousand students then my latest course is on stable diffusion where i talk about like the ethics of it all like that it has predominantly white western rich people that can upload their high quality pictures to the internet for free and all that got scraped and of course the same with artists like there's a problem that artists got used for these generative ai things but um there's an even st a stronger problem that all of these artists are um, predominantly Western and can upload their stuff for free on the internet. Um, then 5SSI and several of my own blog posts in multiple areas, 20 YouTube videos, and I calculated the impression. I have over 1.4 million impressions now, which is really cool. And yeah, guest on multiple podcasts, including the code, uh, code podcast. I forgot the full name, but also a fellow of our co cohort and yeah, multiple talks and guest lectures. So this thing with a fellowship is really like leveraging into like university cities approaching me. Like people now know that I can talk about certain things that are important. And when they don't have their own curriculum about like evaluation or like ethical AI, I do get invited for that as well. And it has this added effect of a fellow for exactly this thing. Um, that's really nice. And now I'm trying to build a community as well, which is very budding and I'm fumbling a lot. I haven't even had like a proper like start meeting with it yet, but yeah, it's supposed to be about machine learning. I want it inclusive, LGBTQIA friendly, uh, queer friendly, um, neurodivergent because I'm neurodivergent myself. And yeah, I try to do my best on the on everything else, but that means listening more than actually doing myself. And yeah, it's basically the idea if you're tired of like 
you're missing out if you're not using these five uh, chat GPT prompts. That is the space that I want to build because I am tired of those. I've been tired of those like a year ago, it feels like. But yeah, um, you can go there and like, it's free. Um, the domain is paid by the SSI and the software was paid by the SSI. So um, yeah, if you want to join, I'd love to have you as well. Um, don't know what it is yet. Grow it together and see what comes of it. And yeah. What I can tell you, have fun with your fellowship and embrace the chaos because it goes some really nice places if you just like let it happen. And yeah, good things come out of it if you like share your stuff publicly. Thank you for letting me run over. And I think that's it for me.